Today we're going to be taking a look at the new SER 3 Series Mini PC from B-Link, which has an AMD Ryzen 7 3750H processor and Radeon RX Vega 10 graphics. People often ask me if they can run Windows on their Raspberry Pi, and I generally answer this by saying that yes, there are ways to run Windows or Windows lookalike operating systems on a Raspberry Pi, but you're better off running Windows on a system that was designed to run it. And that's what we've got here. The SCR3 is a mini PC capable of running Windows 11 and running it really well. Now I'm not comparing this to a Raspberry Pi. This is a way more powerful computer and it also costs a few times more than even the most expensive Pi. But this is a compact Windows PC that can easily be used in similar mobile environments. So let's get it unboxed and see what's included. Inside the box we've got the SCR3 on top, which is protected by a layer of foam on the top and the bottom. Underneath it is the user manual, and in the compartment below that we've got the power adapter, HDMI cable, a short HDMI cable, a vase mount to attach it onto the back of a monitor or onto a wall, and a pack of screws. I like the addition of the mount and the short HDMI cable so that you don't need to buy additional hardware to mount it onto the back of your monitor. The power adapter is quite large, being able to supply 3 amps at 19 volts or a total of 51 watts. The user manual covers all of the basic functions and how to use the mounting hardware. On the front of the computer we've got two USB 3 ports, a USB-C port, an audio port for headphones and microphone input and then the power button. There are cooling vents on either side and on the back we've got the processor fan exhaust, an ethernet port, two more USB 3 ports, two full size HDMI ports and then the power port. The top of the case is also vented to provide airflow to the CPU fan. The computer is powered by an AMD Ryzen 7 3750H processor, which is a 4-core 8-thread processor that runs at 2.3GHz, with a maximum boost of up to 4GHz. Graphics are provided by a Radeon RX Vega 10 GPU, which can drive up to 3 external displays, 2 through the HDMI ports on the back and 1 through the USB-C port on the front. Let's open it up and take a look at the internal components. Under the all-metal shell, we've got a compact motherboard. This particular version has 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM and a 512 gig NVMe SSD. These are expandable to 64 gigs of RAM or a 2 terabyte NVMe drive. It also has a bay for up to a 1 terabyte 2.5 inch drive on the right side. It's also got Gigabit Ethernet, Dual Band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4. On the other side of the motherboard is the processor and cooling fan. It's shipped out with Windows 10 Pro loaded, so you'll need to run an upgrade to Windows 11. I decided to run a quick CPU benchmark on Geekbench. You can see the 16 gigs of RAM listed as well as the processor and clock speeds. The CPU got a single core score of 906 and a multi-core score of 3024, which for a computer of this size is not all that bad. Now that we've had a look at the specs, I thought it would be a good idea to take it overboard and design a new case for it. The stock case has a really clean and minimalistic look that fits in well on a modern desk, but I'd like it to be a bit more eye-catching. So let's open up Inkscape and get to work on a new design for the case. I want the computer to stand upright, more like a traditional PC, and I want to add clear acrylic side panels so that the internals are visible. The bonus is that both sides of the computer are interesting to look at, so I can add clear panels to both sides of the case. My idea was to build the body of the case out of dark tinted acrylic, so that it's still partially translucent, and then I'll add clear side panels to the sides to highlight the internals. I also want to add some LED strip lights to the inside to illuminate the components. Now that we've got a design, let's cut the parts out on my laser cutter.
I'm going to use some nylon standoffs to mount the computer between the side panels and I'll then measure and make up the filler pieces and the port cover plate. I realised that I didn't make a cutout for the fan on the one clear side, so I had to revisit the design and add it afterwards. I then measured up and cut the filler pieces. The sides are just glued into place along one edge using acrylic adhesive. Now let's add some LEDs to the inside of the case to light up the internals. I cut the LED strip into two sections of six LEDs each and glued them into place around the edge of the case. I had to also add a jumper between the two LED strips. And that's the case complete, so let's turn it on and see what it looks like. The fan is quite noisy on startup, but is soon throttled down and is only used when the CPU is under load. So now we've got a mini Ryzen 7 gaming PC. Obviously not having a standalone graphics card has its performance limitations, but it works well for light gaming and in a tiny package, so it's great for taking along when you're travelling. B-Link have also recently released their Ryzen 9 version of this mini PC, called the GTR5. I'll leave a link to them in the video description. Be sure to check them out if you're interested in a more powerful mini PC, particularly if you'd like to use it for gaming. Let me know what you think of this case design in the comment section below. Do you prefer the original modern metal enclosure or the acrylic gaming style case? Thanks for watching, please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.